Fame has proved to be a double-edged sword for Stevie Nicks, bringing with it not just fortune and recognition, but also unwanted scrutiny of her appearance, tensions with bandmates, and a serious coke addiction. Here's the untold truth of Stevie Nicks. As a child, Stevie Nicks inherited her love of music from her grandfather, who was an aspiring country singer. By four, she was performing with him, and a sixth grade talent show cemented her dream of becoming a professional entertainer. When Nix was a teenager, her family moved to California. One night in 1966, the high school senior went to a religious youth group meeting where she was introduced to Lindsey Buckingham. The two played the Mamas and Papas hit California Dreamin' together, and Nix later said she was, quote, captivated immediately. Still, they wouldn't see each other again until two years later when Buckingham called her out of the blue to ask if she wanted to join a San Francisco folk group called Fritz. The band became quite successful locally, opening for Jimi Hendrix, CCR, Santana, Janis Joplin, and Grace Slick with Jefferson Airplane. Despite this, Fritz broke up in 1971. But by then, Nix and Buckingham had become a couple, and they began to make their own music under the moniker Buckingham Nix. Shortly after the demise of Fritz, Buckingham Nix had written enough material to record an album. They were signed to Polydor, but their self-titled debut was a flop and the label dropped them. Undeterred, they continued to work on new songs, including future Fleetwood Mac hits Monday Morning, Rhiannon, and Landslide. Stevie Nicks was also working as a cleaner and a waitress to support the couple financially. She enjoyed the waitressing job, working lunches so she could go home and write music with Lindsey Buckingham in the evenings. But money was tight. In October 1974, she promised her father she would find a new career if they hadn't gotten anywhere with their music within three months. On New Year's Eve, Fleetwood Mac called Buckingham and invited him to join them on guitar. Buckingham refused to come without Nicks. After the band met, singer Christine McPhee was allowed the final say over adding another woman to the ensemble. Fortunately, she said yes. They were in the band, and just in time. The motivation stemmed out of a need to work. In 1975, Fleetwood Mac released the self-titled album that scored them their first big break. Suddenly, Nix found herself subject to comments about her looks. In response, the following year, she got silicone breast implants, later explaining, I had always thought my hips were too big and that I had no chest. Nix told People magazine that she nearly quit singing because she was tired of being fat shamed by the media. In 1994, she had the implants removed after realizing they were causing health issues. She said, it turned out they were totally broken. Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham's romantic relationship ended in 1976, while the new lineup was working on Rumors, their second album together. Nicks told the Oprah Winfrey Network that they, quote, had a very bad fight and she called the relationship off. They both decided to stay in the band, but it wasn't easy. At a photo shoot for the cover of Rolling Stone, sparks flew unexpectedly between Nicks and drummer Mick Fleetwood, who was in the process of getting a divorce. It eventually led to an affair, though Nix was dating Don Hanley of the Eagles at the time. Nix later blamed heavy cocaine use for the affair, saying that it was a doomed thing that caused a lot of pain. Looking back on it though, Fleetwood had a slightly more optimistic take. He told Salon, me and Stevie had a moment in time when we were in love. It was never to be that it could grow and be allowed to breathe in the open. By 1979, Stevie Nicks was still in a relationship with Don Henley of the Eagles, and Fleetwood Mac were working on their follow-up to Rumors, Tusk, which came out that October. Sometime that year, Nicks discovered she was pregnant and had an abortion. Nicks stands by her choice and other people's right to choose to terminate a pregnancy. She told The Guardian that her heavy drug use would have created a bad environment for a child and that she would have been forced to quit the band, which she believed was making music that would help a lot of people. She told ABC Downtown, My particular mission maybe wasn't to be a mom and a wife. Maybe my particular mission was to write songs to make moms and wives feel better. Although Fleetwood Mac had overcome broken hearts and deep-seated hurt to make rumors, it was Tusk that temporarily split up the band. Though it sold four million copies, the album was still considered a commercial flop, 
and the year-long world tour to support it only furthered cocaine-fueled tensions. During the recording sessions for Tusk, Nix had begun working on some new songs, songs she decided to finish without the rest of Fleetwood Mac. She co-founded independent record label Modern Records to put out her music, and on July 27, 1981, her debut solo album, Belladonna, was released. It hit number one in the Billboard Albums chart and stayed in the top 200 for almost three years. Nix was proud, but she later reflected that her success caused tension with many of the men in her life. When she gave Lindsey Buckingham a copy, he left it on the floor of the studio. Nix told The Guardian, They were full-on jealous, all of them. They hated that kind of confidence in a woman. She said that shortly after the album came out, even her father told her she would never find a man who would marry such a successful woman. Still, there are plenty of people who appreciated Nix's music. By 2021, she had released eight solo studio albums and two live albums, selling over 30 million copies. Stevie Nicks never married either of her two most famous boyfriends, Lindsey Buckingham and Don Henley, but she did have a brief marriage, which started and ended in 1983 and was born from a tragedy in her personal life. Around 1981, Nicks's best friend Robin Snyder was diagnosed with leukemia. She briefly went into remission and got pregnant. The father was her husband, Kim Anderson. Unfortunately, the cancer returned. Nix told the Oprah Winfrey Network that Snyder chose not to get further treatment because she knew she was going to die and she didn't want to take any medication that could harm her baby. In 1982, two days after Snyder and Anderson's son Matthew was born, Snyder died. Nix told the Oprah Winfrey Network, I was completely and utterly grief-stricken. I had lost the best friend I had ever had. Believing that the best way she could serve Snyder was by looking after her husband and baby, in January 1983, Nix convinced Anderson that they should get married. She later told The Guardian, It was a completely ridiculous thing. Three months later, she realized they had made a mistake, and they divorced. Nix believes Snyder's spirit visited her to tell her to end the marriage, saying, Robin would not have wanted me to be married to a guy I didn't love. No, it's not just another rock and roll urban legend. In her biography, Stevie Nicks, Visions, Dreams, and Rumors, Zoe Howe confirmed that Stevie Nicks's prodigious cocaine use really did cause her to develop a dime-sized hole in her nasal septum, the piece of cartilage that separates the nostrils. Nicks told the Oprah Winfrey Network that she became more aware of cocaine in 1976. Overuse made her too hyped up, so she tried to counter it with alcohol use leading to a downward spiral of addiction. She later estimated that she spent millions of dollars on drugs, telling The Telegraph, All of us were drug addicts, but there was a point where I was the worst. In 1986, Stevie Nicks sought treatment for cocaine addiction at the famous Betty Ford Center Rehab Clinic in Palm Springs, California. After 30 days, she emerged drug-free. It didn't last, though. A psychiatrist prescribed her a tranquilizer called clonopin, or clonazepam, to help with her alcohol addiction, and she became dependent on the drug. She also was tranquilized to the point where she lost her ambition completely. She later told The Guardian, Clonopin took away all my wonderful drama, my tempestuousness, my compassion, my empathy, all those things that drove me to my piano. By 1993, she had also developed tremors in her hands and finally went to rehab again. This time, it took 47 days, an experience which she told Rolling Stone was, quote, way more horrific than 30 days to get off coke. She said, they stole my 40s. It was eight completely wasted years of my life. Stevie Nicks's penchant for all black outfits, flowing sleeves, fairy tales, Halloween, burning candles, and a song about a Welsh goddess named Rhiannon have seen her labeled a witchy woman. And this is not entirely wrong. One of Nix's magical qualities is her belief that she can connect with the spirits of people she's loved and lost. For example, Nix told The Guardian that shortly after her mom died in 2012, she felt her presence while standing in the kitchen. Moreover, she heard her mom tell her to stop drinking so much Gatorade because it was giving her acid reflux. Being a rock star, Nix has access to some celebrity spirits. 
whom she turns to when she needs musical assistance. She told Variety that she still talks to her departed friends, Prince and Tom Petty, saying, I call in all my spirits and I say, Tom, stand behind me. Prince, stand with me. Nix's witchy reputation is so deeply embedded in pop culture that it became a plot in American Horror Story. In three episodes of the show, she graciously played herself, but as a full-on white witch. Playing in a band with her ex proved to be challenging for Stevie Nicks. She and Lindsey Buckingham argued over the music, and she felt he was jealous of her solo success. Things allegedly escalated to physical violence at a band meeting in 1987, when Buckingham told the others he was quitting just before a huge tour. Nick said that she ran at him in a rage, at which point Buckingham chased her into the street and threw her up against a car. Nick said, I thought he was going to kill me. Buckingham left the band, and in 1990, Nix did too. They both returned in 1996, but it wouldn't last. In 2018, it was abruptly announced that Buckingham would not be rejoining Fleetwood Mac for their upcoming tour. Buckingham later told Rolling Stone that Nix had him kicked off the tour over a perceived insult, telling the others it was either her or him. None of it makes sense to me, you know. Fleetwood Mac, the five of us together is, a, a, in my mind, is a very sacred thing. Fleetwood Mac was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1998, during a brief period where the band's classic lineup had reunited. Then, in 2019, Nix made history when she became the first woman inducted into the Hall of Fame twice, this time for her solo career. By then, 23 men had already achieved this impressive feat, including all four Beatles, Dave Grohl and Jimmy Page. At her second induction, Nix performed alongside her, quote, very good friend, Harry Styles. She told Variety, The only people that think it isn't a big deal are the people who don't get in. Nix got some much-needed female company on the list in 2021, as Tina Turner and Carole King were also both inducted for the second time. Still rocking into her 70s, in 2017, Stevie Nicks told Rolling Stone that she has no plans to ever retire. However, she has had to slow down a little, thanks to some health issues and a global pandemic. In 2019, the night after performing at her second Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, Nix was admitted to an intensive care unit in a Philadelphia hospital. She later told Variety she had suffered from low blood oxygen caused by double pneumonia, among other things. Nix recovered, but her lungs are still compromised. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit in 2020, she was particularly wary. Her main concern was her voice. She told The Guardian that her mom had been on a ventilator, which left her voice hoarse. In 2021, after recovering from a fractured kneecap, Nix canceled five upcoming tour dates due to COVID fears. She wrote on Twitter, While I'm vaccinated, at my age, I am still being extremely cautious. Here's hoping we have a chance to see her sing again soon. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.